Hi, I'm Mitchell Giesen. Hi. <laughs> I like purple sunsets, riding waves, brief burritos. I'd love to take you out for a burrito on the pier in Cincinnati. <laughs> what? <laughs> Well, hello there, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Confused Breakfast Podcast. Do you remember the pure joy of a trip to the video rental store as a kid? Yeah. The excitement of walking down the aisles, browsing the names and the artwork, and finally picking out the movie you're going to take home with you. Sure, it's hard to beat the ease of the modern era and streaming platforms where you don't even have to leave your couch, but there's something truly special about rollerblading to your local blockbuster, picking a movie out by hand, and watching it when you got home. On this podcast, we revisit and dissect some of our favorite childhood movies from that magical era to see if they still move us the way they did as kids. I'm your host, Mike Schulte. Joining me as always, two dudes who don't know what they want to be when they grow up, just as long as they live near the beach and don't have to wear a tie. Sean Pryor and AJ Benz, how the heck are you? He's dead to life, though. Just a decent burrito. That's all I need, bro. Yeah. Bra? Sorry. <laughs> some, some otter pops. Uh, just give me some otter pops. What is an otter pop? My fiance Katie was like, "Oh my god, he mentioned Otter Pops. We're gonna have to look it up because I I feel like it's probably just another one of those like ice cream treats that comes in like the yeah. the, the 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 ice cream trucks. But and it's like, oh, this is a Pikachu. No, it's just a yellow blob with otter. two red dots. You know what eyes. it is? It's those it's those plastic uh, like ice juice in plastic where you cut oh, it open. Yeah, it just must be a particular brand. Oh, just, oh okay. Just so like it's the, the flavored the ice flavored packs. ice pack things. That's the snobby brand. <laughs> Wow. Wow, you wow, you're doing pretty well with your otter pops. Otter pops. Ugh. Well, boys, on today's episode, we discuss a movie that made every child want to own a pair of rollerblades and start calling everyone a piece of underwear. Yeah. A movie that introduced introduced us all to Jack Black and Seth Green, a movie that most certainly did not make Gandhi roll over in his grave. We are of course talking about 1993's Airborne. Yeah. Well, damn dang it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for another nostalgic journey to the past with the Confused Breakfast. Sit back, relax, and enjoy wherever you are in the world. Take it away, boys. Thank you, Lottie. And if you are new to this podcast, we will be reviewing the movie Airborne scene by scene with a modern eye. But in order to do that properly, we must discuss it with pure nostalgia, especially a movie like this. This is one of those movies where nostalgically, it's very important to get this out of the way. So we're going to start with AJ. Tell us the first time you saw this movie, what your thoughts were, and what your nostalgic rating is was. I I, I, I remember uh, catching this somewhere in between, you know, somewhere in that halfway point and, and being like, oh, Brink. Because that's all I knew as far as rollerblade movies, <laughs> Pup really, and Suds, was yeah. Team Pup and Suds. And I was like, oh, this isn't Brink. Is this another Disney Channel movie? Wait, it doesn't seem like it. They're kind of swearing almost in this movie. Wait a second. What's going on here? And then I saw that epic third act downhill race. So long, so awesome. Just, that's what she's, it's fine. Uh <sighs> It was, it's such a good, jeez, would you calm down, guys? God, tough. That's what ugh. she said, joke? Tough crowd, huh? is so much better than that. Five minutes in. <laughs> oh, what is an oil painting? Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> like, the dinosaurs uh, in the paint. Uh. <laughs> so, anyways, but, but watching that entire scene play out, um, is, is what made me go back and then and then find this and watch it in its entirety and then you 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 start to see like oh that's Seth Green oh my gosh there's Jack Black and uh, what you, year are you talking about that I, this I, is for you do you th think this is honestly this is probably like year like two thousand two so 2001. that's kind of nuts actually yeah. to think about it that way because then these guys are actually stars almost by yeah, this point exactly yeah, okay you cool. don't realize you don't recognize right, it so right. yeah you're right like I, you don't you didn't they look so young or yeah. you know. So, but no, I, I was infatuated with it, um, like every time I would see it come on. So honestly, nostalgically, I, I would, I would give this, uh, I'm going to give this an 8.1. 8.1, Sean, what about yeah. you, man? Oh, this movie. <laughs> no. Oh, this movie, man. Oh, just, mm. I loved it so much back in the day. 
Did you? You never saw it? I haven't seen it. Oh, no, it seen did it. you know of it, and you just never made the decision to see I've it? I've seen the cover several times, and I'm talking like three. Um, <laughs> that is it. <laughs> that is all I got wow, to say okay. about it. Like, I, I had no idea Jack Black was in this movie. I had no idea Seth Green was in this movie. I had no idea Shane McDermott was in this movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Silly uh, me. How could you? <laughs> Well, that's a big N.A. for Sean. This movie was my choice. I'll come out and say that so you know I've seen it. I wanted to be Mitchell Guzan. Mm. I'm, a, I'm 12 years old, 13 years old, seeing this. This was an HBO. We had Every once in a while, you would just get HBO for like free for a month. And then we would VHS record everything off of it so we didn't have to buy HBO. This you was bet. this was pre-recorded off of HBO. I started modeling my life after this character, Mitchell Guzan. <laughs> I most certainly began my quest to to be in the X Games for rollerblades. I did. I went out in the street and did all the rollerblade street skating. I did the where you weave in between the cones. With, oh, yeah. I did. I did Heck everything. Yeah. I wanted to be Mitchell Guzan. In fact, when Facebook came around, I changed my name to Mitchell Guzan back when you could do that. <laughs> I loved this movie as a kid, and I'm so excited to strip away the nostalgia. I'm a 9.5. Wow. wow. That's how important this movie was to me. Executive producer Bud Larson says, I remember watching parts of this on HBO when I was a kid. It seemed like I always started from the hockey game with the preps where he scored in the wrong goal. I had a few friends when I was younger that were hockey players that rollerbladed everywhere. I fell a bunch trying to learn to skate, so I went back to riding my BMX bike. I never saw it from the beginning, probably till I was in college in the early 2000s, much like AJ. But then rollerblading kind of phased out as a generational fad. I loved the final scene like Devil's Backbone, but the rest of the movie for me was kind of blah. Nostalgic rating 5.75. So you average those all together. Our nostalgic rating is a 7.78. Which is not too bad. That's actually going to come in at number 28 on our list, just below the Sandlot, just above Mrs. Doubtfire is where that's going to fall nostalgically for wow. us. Wow. Okay. Above Mrs. Doubtfire. <clears throat> Better than Mrs. Doubtfire. Okay. Yeah. I'm just saying, Sean, you agree. You you think it was a great movie. For I, yeah. I, yeah. See? I loved it so much. There you go. So much. Well, now we're going to strip that away. We are going to start learning all the pertinent, important details of the movie. Sean, what do you got on this one, man? I got produced by Bruce Davey and Steve McAvetty. Story by Steve McAvetty and Bill Appablossa. Ah. Screenplay Rose by Black. Bill Appablossa. <laughs> Appablossom. Cinematography by Daryl Okada, who also did uh, Phantasm II. Love the original. Uh, also like Phantasm II. Captain Ron. Oh, God. Uh, Black Sheep, oh. Lake Placid, Halloween H2O, and Mean Girls. Quite a spread there. Yeah, some good stuff. Music by Stuart Copeland, edited by Harry B. Miller III, directed by <laughs> Rob Bowman. <laughs> Rain, he also did Rain of Fire, uh, the movie Electra, the Marvel movie, oh, and the well. X-Files movie. Well. <laughs> also good stuff. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Cast. Shane McDermott, Seth Green, Brittany Powell, Chris Conrad, Edie McClurg, Alana Unak, Unik, no, not Unik, yep. Unik, Jacob Vargas, and Jack Black. He's in this. This is Shane McDermott's first and only film role. A lot of the film was actually <laughs> shot in northern Kentucky, like Newport or Bellevue. However, shots of the Cincinnati skyline and the ending of Devil's Backbone race were filmed in Cincinnati. Sean. <laughs> Johnny, you don't have to do. You don't have to be a dick about it. Okay, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. some movies aren't fucking Citizen Kane with all these weird stories. <laughs> there needs. Citizen okay, Kane. I know. I know we have like an interview coming Rosebud. up. Rosebud. I know we have an interview coming up with with the star of this movie, and that's gonna be fucking awesome. Which you Tune can in. hear coming up on Monday. Yes, yep. but there needs to be a log of this movie. What happened on set besides just Shane McDermott? He's the only one talking about this movie. Yeah, is that weird? Like we've never heard what like Jack Black thought of this movie. Exactly. Yeah, and I I think that they're not really fond of talking about it. Really? Is what I is I've read that somewhere I think. But my my inkling is that the the story was inspired by uh, actually Chris Edwards, the actual yeah. pro uh, X Games uh, who skater. plays uh, Walt Walt in the movie. Yeah. Um, I think it was just like that the writer saw him doing cool shit and he was like, I want to do cool shit, but based in Cincinnati. Think about the fad of rollerblading too. Like yeah. coming into this time, the X Games were just coming around. 
Uh, like they, someone had to tap this. As far as I understand, I don't, I can't think of any other like rollerblading movies no. from that immediate period. You got your no. skateboard movies, like you know, uh, Josh Brolin one, yeah, Thrashing. Thrashing. And then this Gleam one, the I, I, I always, yeah, yes. yeah, you've got no. Rad, 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 yeah. Rad for bikes. Yeah. Like that's like the Holy Trinity. I feel, yeah. Now, now that I've seen Airborne, but. Yeah. You, well, it's it's always weird to me when when we talk about these movies and there's always these these actors that are just so we're fucking actor and like I don't like that first role movie I was in so I don't talk about it. Like if someone comes up to me and wants to talk about the band I was in in high school and like we were terrible, we were fucking terrible, and they want to talk about it, I will be like, oh, I think so fondly of that. That was so fun. Like yeah, we weren't very good, but my god, like it was great. I was young. And, yeah. And that's the difference. Like we, our friend Jacob Givens, we talk about this all the time. Mm-hmm. Jacob Givens on TikTok, if you haven't looked him up, he's incredible. He does a lot of music commentary, and every time he does something about a band, the band like retweets it and like is like, "This is so cool." Anytime we talk about an actor, they all like, uh, "What was the last one that went crazy on TikTok?" It was, it was about some particular actor, and they got tagged probably. 200,000 oh, times yeah. and they never once like even liked it or said a word. Yeah. Like what's the why are actors so weird like that? I don't know. It could be just like time. They're too busy to even do any of that. Maybe some of them aren't even on social media even. So Yeah. Shit. And I mean it, it could just it could just be it was that long ago maybe they've just done other things they'd rather talk about. Yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. Well, we did talk to Shane McDermott. We had a full-blown amazing interview with the main guy of this movie. You'll hear it coming up on Monday. I will talk a little bit more about the behind the scenes yeah. as we get into it. I'm kind of saving that for that. It's more of like the skating and Chris Edwards kind of story um but yeah i'll save that for the when we get into it all right man but we've uh <laughs> hey. uh-huh. before we go to aj to get the ratings reviews of critics and fans alike we just need to tell you that we're so grateful that you listen to this show we're so grateful for the support uh we have two things we'll really hope you'll do for us one this if you're listening to this episode you loved this movie as a kid and what you need to do is share this with your brother, sister, mom, dad, cousin, best friend in the neighborhood who also watched this movie with you. Because this is not a solo viewing. This is with all your buddies. Share this episode. Let them experience the joy of us talking about it. And please consider joining our Patreon, <laughs> patreon.com slash Confused Breakfast. So much going on there. You get a private Discord channel. You get to vote on upcoming movies. You get to hear weekly bonus audio episodes. There's more than like 110 episodes waiting for you right now. You can sign up today, binge them all in 29 days, and then delete your Patreon. You can do that. It's totally fine. Yeah. And we got a new thing, too. We're now letting our Patreon members uh, vote, give their modern-day ratings on movies. So if you have a thought about this movie and what it should be rated, you can join. So check that out, patreon.com slash breakfast. AJ, it is your turn what do you got for us? You know what's coming up, guys. It's probably waiting for us at the bottom of Devil's Backbone. It's the, the tomato meter. Gross. Thank you for taking a breath in between. It's just, it's just like the little hush nice note. Little cue. So I can get into it. Because, yeah, yeah. you know, sometimes he goes, <laughs> Yes. I like, I like that. Good. Uh, 27% splat. That's oh. crit. That's critics. Right? Critical reviews on the tomato meter. That is the tenth lowest movie we have done. Critical rating for the record. The critics thought Super Mario Brothers was better than this at a twenty nine. For the record, Super Mario Brothers was better. The, the critics than this. felt According Super Mario's was Brothers was slightly better than. Now, if we're talking yeah. story, yeah, mm-hmm. Super Mario Brothers. <laughs> Blows every story out the window because that is the structured, well-oiled machine that we all know it is. That's bullshit. Thank you. Thank you, Sean. Yeah. Uh, Audiences disagree at least uh, enough. It's uh, 60% for the audience score on this. Uh, If we go over to IMDb, right in line, 6.2. Yeah, 6.2 is pretty low on the IMDb. That is tied. I just want to throw this out there. We always talk about being below 7.0 as like, ooh. But let me tell you what 6.2 ties this with. Kindergarten Cop. Just Friends, Out Cold. It's a pretty good movie. Is there a so, weird pocket at like just below, like right around 6.2? That's like, well, actually, you should rethink that. Those you should are, rethink this rating. Those are all movies for me, maybe except for Kindergarten Cop, where I'm just like, I will throw on any time and just feel good. Yeah, I'm happy to throw that movie on. Yeah. Yes, I would agree with that. I'm happy. Um, well, 6.2, that's from mostly the audiences, but uh, <laughs> I'm happy. <laughs> Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> That's good. Uh, <laughs> wow. Great, Mike. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I 
love uh, this movie. Oh, how about 75? This is the highest one that I saw as far as a critical review. <laughs> it says 75 out of 100. San Francisco Chronicle. Peter Stack, he's coming back. All right. This movie isn't up to much, uh, but it has a certain eccentric energy, <laughs> nicely stitched to rock and roll songs and a music track by ex-police drummer Stuart Copeland. And it draws you in for an agreeably empty-headed ride and thrilling skating scenes. I can't wait to talk about the soundtrack. I agree yeah. with him. It's, pre- it's pretty dope. Yeah. Um, <laughs> this is uh, a 50, 50 out of 100. Um this is as these things go. This is a this is a painless and breezily amusing variation of this theme. They just said that's kind of whatever it is. If this theme exists, so does this movie. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> um, uh, 25, 25 out of a hundred. Uh, Glenn Kenny uh, at Entertainment uh, simply said the sappy concoction concludes with a genuinely impressive race sequence, but it's not worth the wait. Mm. Harsh. Hmm. Whatever, bro. Bra. Uh, b- bra sorry. Bra. <laughs> Whatever, bra. Someone's underwear. Uh, I found a blog uh, that was talking about uh, this movie and kind of and, and dove a little bit into kind of the characters, uh, the, you know, the actors afterwards and everything. Um, but I, th- I thought I'll just take a couple excerpts from them discussing. They're talking about this a little bit. This is uh, it's from Blade or Die. Nice. And it's uh, Airborne 20 years later. Uh it says, long before the world knew what a cock push-up was, or before chickens became robots, a single cinematic orchestra would conduct itself into the hearts of many, yet immortalized by few. Wow. Yes, I'm talking about the reason why you can't hear one, hear one bro call another bra without responding. Uh, did he just call you a piece of underwear? <laughs> Uh, he says, they say at the end of this, uh, all the problems in this movie obstructing the perfectly happy uh, where the bad guys, uh, where the bad guys get what's coming to, to them and the protagonist attracts the affection of the prettiest female around him are all squashed with a downhill rollerblading race. Yeah. That movie was so influential to my upbringing that I am still quite shocked at how few social problems I've been able to fix with rollerblading. <laughs> <laughs> Seriously, Bowman, I feel like you lied to me. Cool. <laughs> and that was it. Cool. <laughs> cool. Um, how about how about a few uh, just fans uh, coming through here? We let's let's just go for it. Uh, one out of ten said uh, Gordon Bennett. Who's Gordon Bennett? I don't know. No. Well, apparently this person's just shouting his own name then for the title. Oh. In 1999, uh, it just happened. Uh, Bog Boy said, this was one of the worst films I have ever seen. I'm not even sure why I watched it. If I can prevent just one person from seeing it, my work here is done. I give the film a one only because zero is not Every enough. Every goddamn time. Oh, wow. Found you. <laughs> <laughs> One out of ten. Uh, uh, Mana, two, uh, 1999. It's a terrible, terrible, awful. This is the worst movie I've ever seen. <laughs> <laughs> awful acting by a bunch of nobodies. Well, okay. Fail. Uh, Eat your do, words. Do not waste your time. I repeat, do not waste your time. If you have something better to do, like jump off a building, oh, do God, it. got him. <laughs> This trash lick was made with the brainless in mind. <laughs> every time, every time I do an endeavor, I'm like, you know, you know who's gonna like this? People with no brain. People with no brain. <laughs> this new band I started, people with no brain are gonna love it. <laughs> We're called the No Brainers. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, okay, I'll I'll, I'll do this because I want to end on end on a good note. Uh, neither of these actually have a, a rating to them. They're not like a 7 out of 10 or anything like that. There's no rating to it. It's just somebody just expressing how they feel. Um, awesome movie, and all the other reviewers are idiots. All right. <laughs> Said the thrill of victory in 2004. I don't know how this movie is rated so low. Oh, wait. It must be because all the other reviewers on this site are moron film students but think they know everything. <laughs> but only listen to critics and take their words, digest it, and poop. I would have said the bad word. <laughs> <laughs> My kids are watching me write this. <laughs> <laughs> and poop it out of their mouth. And I am a film student myself. 
a senior at how's Chapman that, University. How's that going for you? How's that going for you? <laughs> so I know how most moron film students think. <laughs> I don't know. This movie has great acting, great action, and a great story. This is a review to listen. This is the review to listen to. Look on Yahoo Movies and see the review. The review from normal, sane, everyday people, which give this movie an A minus, and not idiot film students that live uh, that live on this site. This movie gets two thumbs way up. One thumb for the movie, and one thumb for the idiots. You know where reviewers were reviewers on this site. Thanks, guy. Wait, so okay, yeah, never mind. Nope, I nope, don't think I it's don't, worth analyzing, nope, I, Michael. I, please move on. He liked it. Give me <laughs> another one. It. Don't worry about oh, it. Oh, he, he really liked, liked it. it. Two yeah. thumbs up. Cool. Great. Thank you. Thumb up your butt. Uh, <laughs> got shit him on it. <clears throat> Poop. Should have said the bad word. <laughs> all right, last one, guys. The third act. This is all it's called. Said Quinoa, nineteen eighty four. <laughs> all right. It's September thirtieth of two thousand. I was watching this movie on TV one day. And about an hour into it, I thought, isn't the NSYNC concert on TV now? I'd rather watch that. But then, something happened. The third act came on, around, came around, and I was spellbound. The main plot showed a bunch of teens who like to play hockey and roller skate. But for the first two acts, this plot just coasts the movie along and makes it, well, suck. But in the third act... We see a bunch of teens in a race throughout Cincinnati, and I was amazed. Not only the skating, but how it overshadowed the rest of the film. <laughs> B minus. All right, that's pretty good. Right. There you go. Uh, yeah, like that third act is amazing. So I will be excited to feel, see if you guys feel the same way. Okay. Well, my dudes, instead of writing and reading a really cool intro from this movie, I'm just going to read you all the taglines for the movie. Okay. Ready? Hopefully. The world's only rock and roller blade movie. All right. Mitchell's life was a California dream until he woke up in Cincinnati. I was thinking on the way over here, if that's not a tagline. Mm -hmm. Mitchell became the most popular guy on earth once he took to the sky. Oh. Oh. To air isn't just human, it's necessary. <laughs> to air? To air. There are two kinds of people, those who get airborne and those who don't. <laughs> but ready? This is the last one. This is the best one. Okay. Heroes aren't made. They're airborne. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, there needs to be a born pun. Here we go. <laughs> All right. So scene one, Mitchell Guzan is a teenager from California who loves to surf and rollerblade. His zoologist parents find out they're going to work in Australia for six months. Since Mitchell needs to stay in school, he is sent to Cincinnati to live with his aunt, uncle and cousin. Can I invite Mitch Guzan? <laughs> <laughs> no, he did it. No, he did it. Yeah. Is this alternate universe Steve Kuzer? Steve Kuzer. Okay, Kuzer. yeah, I'm into that. Do you think? And in uh, 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 Seth Green's character, <laughs> uh, Wiley, Wiley, duh, Wiley. is uh, a Stony. Okay, is basically a Stony. Yeah. Okay. I, I really like this movie. Steve Kuzer. I'm watching this Kuzer. intro and like I haven't I haven't seen this movie in probably 20 years, guys. And I'm watching this intro going like, is this Point Break? Did I put the wrong movie in? Yeah. Oh wait, nope. There's Rollerblades. They're putting Rollerblades on. That was not in Point Break. I was like, there's ways. This movie is called Airborne. Not waterborne. Yeah. What's going on? What is, is going on? <laughs> it, it, to correct me if I'm wrong, there's something... Uh, maybe I'm a weirdo. This is why I do love to try to get to surf whenever I can. Living in Iowa sucks. There's something unbelievable about wave videography and yeah. surfing videography. Am I crazy? No. Like, I do think you feel that way? I think it's extremely fun to watch. I think it's kind of intoxicating, yeah. like, especially if it's done right, which I think it is done really well in this. Like, it does remind me of Point Break, and it's done very well in Point Break. I mean, you know, think what you want about this movie, but Point Break is a high-level, high-budget movie. Yes, this. exactly. Mm. Um, and it looks just the same. Yeah. It looks great. I'm sure that if I had uh, waves, uh, like, you know, pipes yeah. and waves crashing and, like, flowing and doing it all in slow motion just as a computer screensaver, I'd be a much happier person. <laughs> I think yeah. you would. I think I would be a better person. And I love this intro, man. Like, they... They're uh, they're rollerblading. There's two fucking bro, 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 bro. Serious, serious. 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 <laughs> and they skate and they do this cool move and they skate. And I love. And never once as a kid did I ever, you know, they do that weird jump to where all of a sudden they're in the water. 
Never once as a kid did I th- think twice of that, but now I'm like, how they get their wetsuits down there? Yeah. Where the, how they get the boards down there? Wait, did they dr- did they drive down there, take everything they needed, then drive back up to the top of the hill so that they could rollerblade back down? But then they got to walk, or did like one of them leave a car down there? One of them left. I, that's my adult brain just yeah. fucking their shit mom, up. Their mom dropped it off for them. My mom said she'd be down there. My mom said she'd drop it off. We can rollerblade down though. Same spot as always. Yeah. I never once thought about that <laughs> as a kid. Now I'm an adult and things suck. It's true. I, I was like, well, I, I never put it together about their their the boards, their surfboards. But then I was like, well, I guess they they have back did they have backpacks? They had know, backpacks, but you're not putting a wetsuit, a full wetsuit in there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he ain't doing that. You're huh? not wearing it to the beach <laughs> no. in L.A. You're wearing your wetsuit while rollerblading and just <laughs> passing out from yeah. sweating. I'm done. Oh my <laughs> <God>. <laughs> <laughs> <Are you> serious? <laughs> Dude. Um, I he his friend called him Brophy. Like he said, there's like Mustafa Brophy, like some L.A. super yeah. dude terms, LA. like. Uh, and I was like, that I that can't be his name. I will turn this off if Brophy, Brophy. is our main character. Brody. Brophy. <laughs> Brophy Safa. Come on, bro. Dude, like I just I cannot you're gonna you're gonna have to work really hard to get me. I'm having so much trouble pulling the nostalgia out of my review of this movie. I know. I, I already know it's going to be high, and that's fine. But I, but I don't know if that's right. Like I'm having problems. Like I, lo- I related to Mitchell Guzan so much, and I told you that. Like I moved from St. Louis, Missouri. I lived in this big city. I had all this friends and family. And when I was 14 years old, I moved to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, where I knew no one. Is there a doozles there? There's no doozles. <laughs> Frick. No doozles. Frick, mom and dad. Frick, man. <laughs> and, and I related to, to, to this character so much, the, this, this move that he had to make. But like every word he said when I was a kid in this movie, I was like, oh, that's the coolest line ever. <laughs> and so I used, to, I used to do it. Like when he gets back to his house and he goes, you guys were awesome today. Gracias. And he's talking to his rollerblades. Yeah. <laughs> I used to do that. <laughs> I used to be like rollerblades. Good job today. You were awesome. You're like a you goalie, that, you goalie that. talking to his post. Like good job, guys. Good, good save, post. It's like it's like Marie Kondoing to your like your 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 skates. Like oh, thank you for your thank I you for do. your contribution today. I did it, and I and it was all because of this movie. I was like, you're right. I do need to thank my rollerblades for the great action. Some people talk to their rollerblades, and some people just dress up as Wesley Snipes and Blade. <laughs> Thank you, man. Thank you, thank, <laughs> thank, you, bro. Dude, thank, thank you. you. Different world. Different. Shit, I used to get rollerblade. Like you'd buy your rollerblades, and for at least six months, you would you would wear them and then put them back in the box that they came in after you cleaned uh, them and yeah. stuff like that. You know, okay. that's very important. You got to treat them well. Here's the other thing I have. Uh, the other the big problem I have, especially with this opening scene, is um, you know they're going away for six months. Mitchell doesn't get to go, and he gets to go to. Cincinnati, Cincinnati, right? What are they doing with the dog? <laughs> what are they doing slash, with the dog? What are they doing with dog. Slash? Really they are they already got, down. you know, Strummer oh, was put no. down. Oh, no. Oh, no. Maybe it was like a joke on a joke. They like, didn't answer the question. Yeah. Answer oh, no. And they they dodged like, no, that one. Ju- this whole thing is a ploy to, d- to distract him, and they're just going to get a clone of Slash. Oh, no. When he comes back. Dude, yeah. that, see what I mean? They're zoologists. And they're going to abandon this dog for six months? <laughs> well, the dog, do- to be fair, the dog doesn't have to go to school. Well, it, well, okay. Well, he's not Air Bud, but it's like, <laughs> I'm just. <laughs> maybe he became, maybe he became Air Bud. <laughs> <laughs> so, Mike's fan theory. Okay, okay. It's a little bit. Someone's smoking pot, watch this movie. He's like, that dog is fucking rad, dude. dude. Airborne. Air- Airborne oh! Bud. <laughs> <laughs> That dog's my good bud, bro. Oh, <laughs> oh I, I want that. I want to live in that universe where someone's fucking. That's what they this. took out of this movie, and they made a movie out of it. Fuck it. They're just like, oh god, <laughs> dude, you're not, you're leaving. You're not finished the movie. I gotta go to the studio. <laughs> I gotta say something. <laughs> well, it's, it's true though. That's brutal. Uh, that's like oh. there we. They don't want him to miss school, so they send him to an, a different state oh, entirely. Yeah. Enroll him in that school with his cousin, who he's never met. Would that? Probably. Would that? Was that like a thing? You think that seems crazy to me? Like it's just you would just un- enroll someone to a in, in a one semester of school. I don't know. I don't know if that's crazy, man. Like if let's pretend that I let's pretend that I somehow could convince my parents to like not go to 
that I didn't go to Cedar Rapids and that I wanted to finish like my eighth grade year or something like that would be the equivalent of me staying with family. But that was the town I came from. Like yeah. he's going to a whole not- might as well be a different country oh, yeah. compared to where he and how they make it. I mean, my God, they make it seem like Cincinnati is the fucking tundra of the world <laughs> i know it's like cincinnati's lower like they went than- to calgary or something <laughs> like that it's, <laughs> it's cool running cool running yeah <laughs> when he get when he gets off that plane man yeah i love it yeah i think it's perfect how he portrays like there's just this cool looking surfer dude just standing there going what the fuck am i doing here i you think he got that as a as a carry-on though That's- oh hell yeah yeah Really? Crazy. That doesn't fit in the above the overhead bin. No, that's underneath. That's, that's underneath. A, that's, a <laughs> that's underneath the plane. It seems too radical to be on a plane, really. Like yeah. I, I just, I think that's gonna weigh it down. But like in case of like it crashes and it, into some water, I think he'll be okay. <laughs> like yeah, that's about the. That's he'll about be the, okay. <laughs> why? Why are you bringing your surfboard to landlocked Cincinnati? Yeah. Why? Uh, hey man, it's my stick. I don't go anywhere without my stick. It's my American Express card. My American Express card. I'm naked without it. I get. I, <laughs> <laughs> tell me, tell me how great this is. Like, I want to know. I want to know again. You need to talk me off this ledge here. I think this scene is incredible because his his face, Mitchell Guzan's face, meeting his new family is just like, oh god. Like he's like, what the fuck am I doing here? And they're so excited. But then he does his <laughs> little speech. About his card, and they're like, "Oh my god, what the fuck is going on here?" Like, it just it sucks. <laughs> <saw. laughs> this guy, this guy sucks. <laughs> this guy sucks. Oh no! He's called his surfboard a stick. God, oh. well, some have to get used to, you know. <laughs> then, he is and, handsome, and then and then Wiley walks in looking like like Doug Funny's sister. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh my god! So, yes. He walks in looking like a living, breathing like, Bratz doll. I, I, just, <laughs> oh. oh no! What do you think? What do you think about? I looked up Seth Green. I was wondering where he was at in his career. This is, from what I can tell, his first movie. He mm. did a lot of what he did a lot of TV and like uh, maybe even Broadway and stuff. But this was his first movie, and then he just kept doing TV until '97 when he was Scott in Austin Powers. Oh yeah, and then I'm thinking that w- when was like um, all of his animation stuff in his Robot comic? Chicken was that a was little, little after late two thousands. Yeah, you know, I mean, he everyone knows who Seth Green is, but this is the first time I remember seeing him in anything. Well, yeah, I mean, I I think there are there were tidbits like you said through TV, but it's not like you uh, recognized him, mm-hmm. you know. And the first time I really recognized him um, was was uh, was Austin Powers. But and when was uh, what is it? She's all that. Or, uh, That's after uh, not, Austin Powers was ninety seven. Yeah, uh, I can't remember. What so that, that was. might have been that might have been after. That. Yeah, I think so. Wow. See, that's that's crazy to me to think that that this was ninety three. Right, yep, this and then that. ninety-seven was Austin Powers. Four years, and that was the that was the big thing. I mean, do you think he's do you think he's the best acting talent in this movie? Like, I mean, even at the at the time, I think he's probably the best performance in this movie. Like, I'll, I'll get to it later, but I think Jack Black is even a little fucking obnoxious in this movie, <laughs> a little bit. Um, but yeah, I, I I think he's probably the most watchable other than other than Mitch Guzan. Yeah, like, yeah. He's he's good. He's really good and also, also handsome. But you know, uh, as far as like acting talent, like as playing this character, playing like the the frumpy friend who's got a you know who's a little who's a little who's a little weird. Yeah, he's great at it. But you like him. I, I can tell you from experience that I I, I read his character as being the unlikable nerd or whatever you know yeah. but like i always liked him as a kid i was always like oh wiley's pre- wiley's pretty goofy but he's cool like he's a cool guy yeah. you know the wiley i'm the wiley man the wiley man it's like <laughs> don't he's... let my parents fool you bro <laughs> <laughs> i'm cool <laughs> look at this fucking hair dude <laughs> i i dude I, I i really do like him in this and at first uh especially rewatching because i hadn't seen it in a little while i'm like i was like did they I was like, "Oh, they're." I think this is ch- gets chalked up that they aren't going to get along at first, right? You know, as which would have been such an easy out. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, the first barrier I got to get oh, through. No. I got to save Wiley from getting beat up by Blaine or something. <laughs> and it's like, okay, that's. I'm glad they didn't do yes. that. You know, um, I I think I think his character is actually very relatable. Seth Green's yeah. character is very relatable, um, for a lot of folks. And then, um, does everybody does everybody have the this friend? Who has these parents? Oh yeah, 
Edie McClurg as this as his mom is is awesome. I mean, keep going, please. Uh, it's it's uh, and she said, oh, I, I'd love I'd love to get out there to go to California, but I whenever I eat too much salad, I get de- deceptive or whatever. <laughs> they talk deceptive. so fast that you don't pick up anything. And, and the, da- saying. the dads, uh, oh, yeah, oh, everything God, that he I'm says is like him. really buried in the in the audio track. It seems, <laughs> but like when when you hear, it, you're like, my God, yeah, they're they're. Like ripping off each other so well. Okay, I uh, I'm, I hate, hate to do this early oh, early no. to you, but I need you to give it to me. What do you want, prop? Ooh, here's a prop. <laughs> give it to me. That prop. That's okay. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> no, I uh, there's two things that I'm really debating on. One is the license plate frame that says my other car is a Zamboni. <laughs> You would be the only person in Iowa to have yeah. that. Yep. yep. And uh, or or uh, if you look, there's a point where it's his dad. It's when he gets up and he's like, he's like, well, I was watching the. Uh, it's like, come on there, father. He's just like, okay. <laughs> that's I, I think, dude. I think that's the funniest part of the fucking movie. Is he, so he stands weird. up and he goes, hold on a second. They got the puck and then, oh no, just left the blue. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> It's like there was a chance, and then the other team gets. He's like, All right. okay, fine. I know what's gonna happen here. His, his dad, is, I bet, is a is an awesome like hockey a, a yes. analytics man. He loves he hockey. He loves hockey. Uh, but if you look right behind him, <laughs> there's a lamp that's made out of three hockey sticks. No! Oh, man. and it's awesome. This and is I would an love obvious that. choice. This it's is an obvious so choice. cool. You need the lamp. I know. <laughs> you're right. Okay, you taking the lamp? I'll take the lamp. What are you thinking, man? Oh, I got man. one. If you're thinking, did. Did uh, Wiley have like some sick ass sunglasses? They were on? red, red that's, circular that's sunglasses. That's exactly what I want. I don't yeah. feel sunglasses. like you look good in those. I don't think so either, but I need them. <laughs> it's not what it's about, Mike. I would never wear them. <laughs> well, then I want I want a Cincinnati Cyclones jersey. Oh, right. the, the, the twin. I think the twins. the twins wear them. Yeah, it's. I think that's a real. I think that's probably a minor league like USHL team or something okay. like that. But yeah, I want I want one. Heck yeah! So send send them to me. Send them over. Send them to me. My address is. Uh, one four Fart Street. Well, you're <laughs> do you? I mean, short. so you guys like these parents, though, right? I love them. Well, you love you love the parents, but like, I also love the fact that for the most part, Wiley isn't completely obnoxiously. Come on, Dad! Come on, <laughs> uh, cramp in my style. It's like no, he. I think I think it's really funny. Like, like when they show up, would you would you kids like some grape Kool Aid? <laughs> yeah, and it's like he's not bothered by this. You know what I mean? I so. I do like them as parents. As we get as we get to know them further too, like they seem like they love their son. They seem mm-hmm. like they, you know, very got, supportive. Yeah, very supportive of their son, who is maybe a little a little weirder than other sons. Correct. That they Correct. Could have, you know, uh, but it also seems like as soon as he's out of the house, they're in their sex chair. Oh yeah, they, they, <laughs> Ooh, I'm feeling kind of frisky. Yeah, exactly. Well, let's get that twister game. Out. <laughs> <I> fucking <laughs> love that line, dude. It's so good. But again, his you nailed it. His line, the his dad's lines are buried so far in the mix yeah. Oh, yeah. that oh, you, right. I never knew he said that until I was able to put closed captioning. It's on so it. good. It's like there, there's a like maybe the first thirty minutes of this movie are pretty funny. Like they're yes. and like pretty out there. As we'll get to this next scene, um, but. I, I almost wish the movie had more of this tone going through it. Like that kind of weird, kind of off quirky. the cuff, quirky. Yes. Yeah. Great, great word for it. Yeah. yeah. Well, my, one of the, I'm going to keep pointing out lines uh, when they're driving in the car home and he goes, ah, oh, there's, yes. there's the hole where the sausage factory used to be. <laughs> <laughs> the, so, the hole, the where, hole the where the sausage, sausage factory used to be. Even the clerk says it and he's like, yeah. oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, oh, yeah. I, and you, again, you said everyone's got those parents. That's the people that are always like, oh, you get that there. That's the deli that we go to, and that's there. And then you're like, I don't care. Kind of trying to fill the dead air of this conversation that you're like, it's of this car ride. Yes. So there's no, it's oh, we don't want him to feel awkward, you know, by not, I don't know. We'll just all just talk about Dude, things. Dude, but imagine, imagine Mitchell Goose in here. He's got six months of this ahead of him. Yeah. He just walked into a frozen tundra, no place to surf, no place to rollerblade. Or sorry, his rollerblades haven't even made it yet. Yeah. And he's like he's with these people. Yeah, no one like he knows at all back home. Well, and speaking of six months of him as a character, I do like that it, it could. You, I think you mentioned a little bit earlier that it could be, it could have been like a uh, oh god, I gotta be here kind of thing, or like that him and his cousin would have like a contentious relationship at first. Mm-hmm. But Mitch Guzan as a character is like laid back. He's like mm-hmm. the you know the L.A. surf dude, and it's don't really see that in these kinds of movies yeah. really. 
and, and he's incredibly likable and approachable, but it's it's obvious like it's obvious obvious why as we move into this next scene why people aren't going to like him. Yeah. You know, right off the bat. Yeah. Yep. Well, before we move on to scene two, we have to talk about Cedar Ridge whiskey. For those of you who actually did it, for those of you who sold us out of our hand selected American single malt from Cedar Ridge. You now have tasted it. You've gotten your hands on this bottle, and you've understood that this is one of the best-tasting whiskeys of all time. Even the head distiller, Murph, over there is like, this is an incredible barrel. And it just goes to tell you and to show you that Cedar Ridge truly is making waves and absolutely destroying the competition in the American bourbon, American single malt game. I mean, they are they're unbelievable. This, this glass I have in my hand right now, is this single malt that we have. I put one ice cube in there and it just explodes. The flavors come flying out of it. You got to check them out. If you're in the Midwest, you might be able to get them at your local store. Maybe even ask them if they can get it shipped in. If not, you can actually order stuff online now. There is an e-commerce store that will deliver it to like 38 different states, I believe, at this point. CedarRidgeWhiskey.com. Go pick something out. Go have it sent to your house. That We talk about it all the time. When I watch these movies that I'm nostalgic for, you put some whiskey in my mouth and like I'm just I'm like tearing up with how happy I am. <laughs> just I'm just like this is this is life, man. Mm-hmm. Nostalgia and whiskey, baby. Yeah, bro. Yeah. So go check them out, please. Cedar Ridge Whiskey. They support us. You gotta go support them. Please. Cedar Ridge Whiskey.com. Cedar Ridge Whiskey.com. We love you. Thank you so much. If you did get a bottle, Cedar Ridge Whiskey.com. So scene two, he arrives in the midst of a winter storm to a blue-collar Midwestern city and meets his new family. Mitchell is met on his first day at school with obstacles. He is antagonized by the gritty hockey players who chastise his him for his California appearance. Mitchell and Wiley go watch the hockey players play against the rivals, Preps. Wiley and subsequently Mitchell are asked to fill in for two players. Mitchell inadvertently scores a goal for the preps and Jack tackles Mitchell, leaving him unconscious. I will say I take back everything I said about Wiley when I see his room. Fucking awesome. Dude, are you into yeah. this? I love his room so much. Because I can't understand if they're trying, like at the time, were they trying to make it cool or were they trying to not make it cool? You know what I mean? That's oh, a tough yeah. thing to think about. Like back, yeah, 93... I feel like this is what my older brother's rooms yes. would look like, though. And I wanted to always go in, but they said, stay out of my room, Damn. nerd. Nerd, you can't come in. You can't come in. You're my little brother, you don't get to come in. Mom, he's in my room again. That's what they would do. I didn't go, get to go in these cool my, places. My gut tells me that they were trying to not make that like super cool. They're really? Trying like, uh, they're trying to be like, oh, whatever, like Midwestern cool basement kind of thing. Oh, but yeah. but I, now I, I completely yeah. agree with you. I think this I think this is the fucking coolest room I've ever seen. Hell yeah. And as soon as he turns the lights on, music starts playing. It's, it's just like a whammy bar going, yeah. <laughs> which is half of this soundtrack. But yeah. um, I, I love it. <laughs> He's got some great posters on the wall, too. Yeah. Dude. He likes some good bands. Yeah. yeah, I like it. He stands on the bed and like pulls a pulls a swimsuit poster. He's like, check it out, dude. Yeah. We, we can jerk off together, bro. <laughs> <laughs> now we don't have to jerk off alone anymore. <laughs> oh like, Wait, I'm sorry, what? that's my fault. I took it that way. Oh no, that's why you're excited. I'm here. Oh <laughs> shit. Yeah, is that what you meant by like waxing your board? Right? Okay. <laughs> I didn't know. I thought <laughs> waxing your board. I think that this school scene is a perfect way. We talked about it in Con Air about being creative to introduce people introduce the rest of the cast and like that con air scene where the prisoners come through and they talk about them. I love it. I love this way of introducing everybody. The class it's first day of class. Everybody's got to get up and introduce themselves. Like it's genius, right? Yeah. I, th- I think it makes, it makes a lot of sense. Oh, you know, the first instance into class and meeting people with speech class. Perfect. So you got to get up and say a few words and I have about a 1. yourself. 1.1 GPA. And one by one GPA. <laughs> Did you guys have to do that in any sort of class that you're in? You have to stand Million up and be percent. like, I'm Speech class. Sean Pryor, and I want to be this when I grow up. I want to be a podcaster. When I grow yeah. up. What's a podcast? Everyone was, like, everyone was like, oh, I want to be a doctor. Uh, I want to I want to be a vet. I want to be all this stuff. I'm like, I'm going to I'm gonna perform. I'm going to perform for that's people. What you, that's what you would say? Yeah, and I did. laugh? Yeah. I, I, rem- I, I do remember, actually, that in, um, it was when we were younger, though, not quite high school. But I remember saying... I remember I saying that I wanted to be a cartoonist or on the radio. 
Nice. That's so basically, why I said. Basically, you fulfilled your dream. Yeah. You're a living cartoon. You're, you're, on, you're, on. you're on what's better than radio podcasts. Yeah. And you do artwork. Like, you make screen printing. Yes. I, I may, Congrats, man. You Maybe I it. fulfilled my childhood <laughs> you dream. You made it, man. You well, so did, so did Sean. Sean said he wants to perform. He's performing. Yeah. You know what I said? I said I wanted to be a fucking rollerblading surfer, and neither has uh, come true. Uh, well, you were. it's because you're in Iowa. Because uh, I watched this movie. You got to talk wanted, to the ultimate uh, rollerblading surfer, though. I know. That's true. That's true. You did. I did. Can I ask you, as um, since that's what you wanted to be, mm-hmm. and you were idolizing Mitchell Guzan, did Mitchell Guzan? Ah. <laughs> uh, did you? <laughs> did you? Did you? Did you ever have girls uh, coming up and dropping their stuff in front of no, you on purpose? Never. Nothing like that. How there about you, one... Sean? Anybody? <laughs> Anybody? You're asking. Uh, you're asking me. And then they and then they stare at you while they basically just drool and imagine you shirtless. I fucking love it. They're I'm, the most thirsty girls in this school. I mean, I get it. I yeah. get it. They don't have much to work with with the guys in Cincinnati. Yeah. It's very true. Oh, wow. Oh, I'm a tough, gritty guy. I, can't, I like hockey. I can tell you this, though, that when I did move to Cedar Rapids, Iowa, there was I was the new guy, right? So, like, women do... I'm very generalizing. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but uh, th- a lot of the women were like, oh, cool, new guy. He's hot and different, and he's from What's somewhere else. What's your story? Right. But then when I started opening my mouth, being like, I like corn, I like Metallica, I fucking look at my hair. Well, we got like a lot flannels. of corn in Iowa. <laughs> yeah, we got like, a lot of corn here. Minute, I could have played it so cool like Mitchell, but I did not. I did not Dairy have Queen fo- sucks. Doozles is the best. <laughs> yeah. I didn't have any philosophy Go game list. to spit at all. It sucked, yeah. man. Yeah. Did you recognize Jimbo? <laughs> oh, G- yeah. Yeah. Um, Jimbo's the one, like he's one of the ones that gets up and he like puts a retainer and he goes, "I want to be a sportscaster." Sportscaster. Did you recognize him at all? Uh, yeah, but I don't know what from. No. no. God damn it, you guys! I... His name is Larry Bagby. <gasps> of course. Oh, oh. <laughs> come on, oh, I know. come on, come on! Ah, I know, I know that name. He, he. This is his second appearance per the per the yeah. Jarrett layoff, uh, confused breakfast actor database. Second appearance in any in any movie we've done. He was in. Episode number one. No shit. He was fucking ice in Hocus Pocus. Oh. Ice. He was ice. Ernie. Ice. <laughs> ice. I this is ice. This is <laughs> ice. I couldn't believe it. I was like, oh. like, And I never picked that because I would have seen both these movies back Dude. in the day. I never picked up on that. It get, it's a dead giveaway, like his like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> his nose into his into his smile thing. Oh man, and, and yeah, also S- Snake is played by Jacob Vargas. Yeah. He's gone on to a pretty illustrious career. Yeah, he's been a lot of stuff. I mostly know him from Ernest Goes to Camp. Pretty, I just throw that out. Oh, pretty okay. sure he's in Next Friday, the sequel. I think so. I believe he was even in some like uh, a lot of TV drama. I think he was in like the Mayans, yeah, and Sons of Anarchy, yeah. and stuff like that. Oh. He's great. He's like really good in this. Movie. I really I enjoy like. him in this movie, except for the very first time we see him. Yeah, where it's just like. I don't. I can't even remember if he likes if, how much he says. He's just like, <laughs> I'm like, like, wait a second. He's, he's just like, I, I eat teeth. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> there's some like badass line. <laughs> I don't have no hobbies. I don't play no sports. He bumps into him in the hallway, <laughs> and he's just like, he's just like, Whoa, you're just like, oh gosh. Well, even, like he threatens him too, I believe. And yeah, just, and then like nothing ever. I like. You were supposed to be scared of this guy, but it never like comes up again later. Like I yeah. know he's like one of the one of the dudes who's an antagonist technically. But. Yeah, you just got to include him in the fun and games. Yeah, and everyone will love poor Rudolph. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Well, let's also talk about a little bit about Jack Black then. Let's bring him up because we first get to meet him. He's Augie uh, here. Augie. Um, he's sort of the the number two of Jack, I guess, at this point. He's the number two antagonist. Mm. I I always loved him in this movie. Like before I even knew who Jack Black was, I was like, Oh, Augie's hilarious. Like I, I like I liked the way he talked, the way he kinda was very animated, which we've come to know about Jack Black, yeah. obviously. What'd you think about him in this movie? He uh yeah, I, he's definitely he looks like he's a standout for sure you know and i it just looks like to me that he is standing out a little too much okay for me and like i I tried to take away my my mindset of like that's jack black and that's what he does you know but i don't know i was just like he seemed like he was maybe taking trying to take the spotlight a little bit 
from a lot of people. Well, from but from kind of what we heard though, from we interviewed Shane McDermott. Obviously, yeah. we told you you'll be able to hear this full interview. But he said he said he was pretty pretty quiet, and he really wasn't like the Jack Black that we know today. But yeah. but yeah, I don't know, man. It, de- it definitely seems like a lot, like especially his like I am Augie, and this is what I want to do. Yeah. Um, it seemed like that was like improved. Like yeah, he, I like they see just that. like let the camera roll, and he went up there and did it, and then like kind of. Didn't little, have anything else to say, so he just kind of did a little freak out, you know? Kind of brings it into his character and makes the character, like, you know, shapes his character by some of these antics that he has. Yeah. You know, and that is that is the way I felt about it, too. And I, But in the end, I, I, I love it when they kind of get back into it in the hallway again, mm-hmm. you know, and having... Those interactions, he's like, he's, he did it. See, he did it again. <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna. I mean, he's yeah. got like almost a lot of like the best comedic lines besides the parents. Like, what's consciousness? <laughs> <laughs> I fucking love that. That's so good. And Jack's like, go go up there. Uh, whoa, hold on. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of speaking of Jack, I like the um the fantasy sequence that happens. Yes. When he's talking. Did you to, think? It, did it get you? Like you thought he really did that. Uh, for a sec, yes. yeah, and I'm like, but they're doing the, the fantasy thing. And I'm like, for oh. the window, yeah. Yeah, but. exactly, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I like that they did that. I'm like, oh, that's fun. It's like a kind of like a three o'clock high kind of thing, a movie that I really love that's kind of, or like a uh, Better Off Dead with John yep. Cusack, kind of like that that more fantastical aspect mm. to like a, a, a high school experience. And I, I was like, I want, I hope they're going to keep doing and this. And they didn't. But I'm glad they did. I don't know. I, I'm conflicted about it because it, I like that aspect so much. But then I don't like that they didn't keep doing that kind of thing. Right. That, that it was a one-off thing. Tone. Yeah. It was a one-off thing. It was just those two uh, little, the yeah, girls the fantasizing two. and him fantasizing. And then yeah. Gone. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah that, that stuff kind of kind of cuts out. Maybe, you know, the, I guess the allure of him being new is kind of wearing off. And everybody just, sure, you know, okay. that kind of stuff happens, okay. I guess. Okay. But again, that's a that's kind of a deep read into it honestly uh but it also kind of created a little bit of maybe foreshadowing because that does eventually happen to him on the ice and and again later yeah, oh true. shit in, in in the in the movie damn so. that's deep bro dude, man, dude, i'm so you, that's you deep really rock. thought about this so man. Deep, man let's talk about this ho- <laughs> <laughs> let's talk about this hockey scene what fucking school sponsored like sporting event is this? Right. <laughs> First of all, no. We're one. gonna beat the press. Okay, no so one has. Jer- do they go to the same school? If we're talking about this scene, we have to talk about how that class was just unhinged, <laughs> <laughs> completely. The, the teacher was just like they were like fighting. They were like like pushing and shoving and like calling each other's names. He's just like. Yeah. <laughs> and he even goes uh, great first day. I don't even care. <laughs> I don't even know what fucking we're doing here. Bell's gonna ring, and I got fucking bourbon to get to. Okay? <laughs> Man, speech class, get out! Get here. the fuck out! I coach hockey. I can't wait for the game. So, in the same aspect, it's like, yeah, like the hockey. Who's letting this happen? Yeah, dude. And they have. Did you notice that? There's no glass. It's fencing. It's fencing. <laughs> I never noticed that as a kid. There's first one to three wins. Yeah. Why do you have a clock running then? What is? Why do you have a clock running? No uniforms. <laughs> no rules. There's this interference is- all over the place. Like <laughs> guys are not touching the puck and they're just getting tackled. Yeah. Offside. <laughs> they don't care. <laughs> I don't think there was any refs, was there? <laughs> no. So this is this is not. not this is not a school event. No, like, this, this is, is just them going. Yeah, like every once in a while we play hockey it's, against these guys. They put the ice arena in the abandoned air hangar next <laughs> to the high school. Right. I did think. I did think for a second. I was like, this place is dope that they're at though. <laughs> it is. And uh, whoever maintains maintains this, this is pretty neat. You know, somebody's got to tend to this ice <laughs> at least every once in a while, right? <laughs> but <laughs> oh my god, the dad does. <laughs> That's the yeah. oh. That's why Wiley's so stoked oh, on it. No. But but like <laughs> I just sit there I just sit there and think it's like, wow, this is a really well organized event pre Facebook. Like <laughs> they, made, they you make going to the event. game? You guys going to the game? Well, do they put a flyer out or No, that's like, when you had to make a plan and you yeah. had to follow it. Guys, and it's like how did this how did this spread like wildfire? It's not like it's not like a school event. It's like, yeah, no, no the hockey it. games are always at six PM on third, a Friday. Third Monday of the month. Right. We right. always play the preps. Well, that's, <laughs> oh, is that that's the prep game. We're we're doing white out that's is, that it still, game. is it still first to three <laughs> or always? <laughs> what, what are we doing? <laughs> yeah, it's a short game. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Uh, but like again, we need to, we need to talk about how fucking influential the character of Mitchell Guzan is on a young man 
in 93. Talking to a little this lady. Po- this poetry Jesus. that he's spitting. Like you had to at least try to relate to that a little bit. Oh my like god, that. yeah, no, for sure, dude. His 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 two different lines. You spend so much time fighting over the waves that you don't get a chance to enjoy the ocean. Yeah, that that is pertinent today. I know that is like a cheesy surfer fucking line, but you spend so much time worrying about something or fighting about algorithms and like trying to make posts and wondering what everyone else is doing. You don't. You're not enjoying life. You're not enjoying the ocean. And then. You goddamn know that this was my line that I said to everyone. They're like, what do you like to do? I'm like, I like the smell of the ocean, purple sunsets, and surfing in the rain. <laughs> well, you live in Iowa. Yeah, no, I go surfing a lot. No, no, no. no, I've, no uh, I, every year my family goes to Florida. I, I've been on guts before. Surfing the wheat <laughs> waves. <laughs> uh, them uh, corn stalks. Uh, the corn stalks. Uh, d- no. Well, I just love that conversation. That's they have. I know, and that the, the thing of it is, is I was like, yeah, I'm. He had to have taken that from like a mail-in VHS dating thing. <laughs> like it's like, hi, 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 I'm, <laughs> I am, hi, I'm Mitchell Gibson. Hi. <laughs> I like purple sunsets, riding waves, brief burritos. I'd love to take you out for a burrito on the pier in Cincinnati. <laughs> what? Like, what's going on? I don't care. Your smile is nice. Yeah. (laughs) The only thing I don't like about this scene is that he's like, she's, they're going to get me in trouble. She's dating him, and he's mad at me for talking to her. And it's like, doesn't she know these people? Yes. And then, (laughs) well, another thing that I have is that uh, he's telling that surfer story about the the bully on the wave that wouldn't let him on Mm -hmm. on anybody's, on his wave. And I'm just like, did he have a run-in with War Child? (gasps) From Maybe. Point Break? War child. Wait, what year was Point Break? 91. Maybe. Oh, God. Yep, you're right. Maybe was Mitchell Guzan was in the gang, but then he had this bad run-in, and then he said, I got to get out. He I started become... reading a lot of Gandhi. Yes. Yeah. Maybe was... he was like being groomed to be like yeah. part of their Bodhisattva. gang. Yeah. Yeah. He was the next. Wait a minute. Maybe he, maybe he was feather bonnet. Maybe, <laughs> <laughs> maybe he was feather bonnet that we didn't get to see in the movie. Relax, War Child, <laughs> Stephen, feather bonnet. <laughs> Knock it off. Why Why you just call me Stephen? <laughs> My name is Mitchell Goosen, man. <laughs> Take it in. That's the really goose. That's fucking good. Stay off my way. Stay off That's my all way. all that was going through my head when he was telling that story. <laughs> Which is basically. Bro. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you can't, and you can't not talk about the terrible goaltending of Jack Black here. I know that he scores on his own goal. Yeah. But what was Jack Black doing? Wh- who are you taking? Are you going to take Gold- Goldberg? Are you going to take, well, take Augie? I got a theory. I th- my theory is that Jack Black is not the goalie. Oh. And he's filling in that Rosenblatt. Rosenblatt, yeah. Took so a, took a puck to the face. We didn't talk right? about him, where he's just like it's just a shot of him, <laughs> just doing that. Like Creepy I, as fuck, bro. If 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 Craig, if you could, well, I'll give you the the numbers of of the scene or like what the runtime is or whatever. But just just edit in right Rosenblatt here. right here, right here, him yeah. Hannibal Lecter looking mother. <laughs> <laughs> So I I would take I would unfortunately have to take Goldberg over Jack Black over Augie if I'm if I'm trying to win a game. Augie, Goldberg's at least going to be standing in the goal, you know, like Augie wasn't even paying attention. Yeah. Well, if you tie him into the goal, yeah, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> so he, uh, Jack comes and tackles the shit mm-hmm. out of him, and the way his head bounces off of that ice, even in, even with that helmet, I don't know who that stuntman was, if it was Chris Edwards or not or whoever. Ooh, I don't know who that would have been. That is still. Brutal, dude. Oh, well, and it's pretty obvious that literally he was out. He was unconscious for at least an hour. Enough time for everyone to clear the stands. Yeah. None of the parents said, "Hey, that kid's lying out there unconscious. Should we go up now? He's fine." Wiley's dad showing up, getting ready to zamboni. Zamboni. He's and, not. Doing and they're like, "We gotta wait. We can't zamboni. We gotta wait for this kid oh, that's yeah, been yeah, unconscious." Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, okay. Put him on ice. Oh, uh, there's a little, little Zamboni joke. A little fun. They we just like that fucking fun. leave him there, man. Yeah. Which is very evident by how hard his fucking head hits the ice. Yeah, it's bad. It's uh you know, he did he did say in this movie he's probably the one who took the biggest beating. Uh it's true, maybe <laughs> it was him. So yeah, you're right. 
Well, let's move on to scene three. So over the course of the next few weeks, Mitchell and Wiley are harassed relentlessly, culminating with Mitchell having a dream which convinces him to peacefully confront the situation. During the interim, Mitchell falls in love with Nikki. During a double date with his cousin and Nikki's friend Gloria, the leader of the preps, Blaine, physically confronts Mitchell, who is only saved when Jack arrives to stand up for his sister, Nikki. Can I ask a question really quick? I'm ready. I know what it's going to be. uh, You want me to write it down real quick? Yeah. Okay, here it is. Hold on a second. Oh. Oh, he's not gonna get it. Okay, I'm gonna great today, go ahead. By the way, go ahead. Thanks. I was just vamping. Oh, good. Here we go. Ask your question. Well, I I was gonna, go I was going to ask, is this the fault of the guys or Mitch of scoring that goal before we got here? That's what I was going to ask. <laughs> Is this the fault? I got it. Is it? <laughs> no, go ahead. Because, because they, they, they like throw him in and it's like, yeah, let's get this kid from California who likes to surf and stuff. And <laughs> he's like, clearly a good skater. He's, he can skate. Like, okay, he can skate. And then it's like, but he doesn't know anything about hockey. So it's like, you didn't take at least five minutes to educate him and say, that's our goal that we're shooting down there. And Mitchell's this is fault. why he tax, tackles him. Is it his fault? It's, it's he's distracted. Oh, fault. he's distracted by Nikki, yeah. not paying attention to the game. Yeah. Okay, I just want to make sure. I just want to make sure. Yeah. Okay. What's the question you, what thought, was the question you thought I was going to ask? No. I thought you were going to ask, have you ever been in a restroom that hung toilet paper from chains above it? No. No. That's and what I, thought. I am glad you were going, because I was going to ask this oh, question. Oh, no, come on. <laughs> that was my second question. I wrote it down. It says toilet paper, it, dot, 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 yeah. dot, dot. Yes. Yes. What's it doing up there? How do you get? You have to stand up. Yeah, to you got to it, right? stand. You got to stand up and pinch your cheeks together <laughs> oh, again. Yeah, that's the worst to part. To make it a, a worse situation than what was probably already there to begin with. I don't like it. That's it, not okay. As he was walking away, I'm like, I know that it's gonna get hung I, up. I, You're I gonna know be that pulling single sheets because it's gonna get caught every time. It's not good. And also, even if they're wet, just still use them. I would still like I'm not walking around with mud butt all day. Mm. You're going to yeah. get a rash, bro. If yeah. anything, you Rah. just you just take the whole thing as one piece. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Yeah, you don't b- peel them off. You just yeah. go just but it, and then But then whatever. you can't you can't get it off the chain uh, cuz somebody somebody the janitor's got to show up to unchain the toilet yeah, paper. Yeah, he's got a he's got certain individual <laughs> yeah. padlocks for everyone. He's got keys for every lock of toilet paper. These damn kids keep stealing the what toilet that, paper. Was that bathroom 3 stall B? Stall uh, 3 B. I think I have that key somewhere. <laughs> yeah, I got that. It's like the key master in Matrix 2. Uh, uh, I don't <laughs> like this. <laughs> 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 okay, uh, I don't. I don't like the song in this whole uh, Jesus Christ. What Sorry, I was gonna say use the magazine he was reading. Yeah, Go ahead. Yeah. Ooh, but that's a surf magazine. Oh, was it? Yeah, oh, you don't shoot. touch that. Don't touch that. Yeah. Um, the it, the song in this. Uh, what am I in like the montage? Co- montage. Jesus Christ! I'm trying to that word. Um, we brought you on for your knowledge of movies. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> montage. You don't know this terminology. I just know the French word. Yeah, <laughs> montage. <laughs> Um, but I don't like the song. What is the song? It's I like think I'm it. from out of town. I'm <laughs> being bullied. <laughs> That's the words. It's tough being new in town. <laughs> it's basically that. L.A. <laughs> <laughs> kid and a Cincinnati town. <laughs> Look out! There's bullies walking in. Gonna dump water on your toilet paper. <laughs> Uh, yeah, you, then yes, I don't like the song either. Okay, <laughs> that's all I have. That's the word. I'm glad we got some great stuff out of that. Um, oh. But then, then life in Cincinnati ain't riding waves. <laughs> <laughs> the waves are riding him. Ooh. Nice, I like that. Write that down. Um, the, he gets home and Edie McClure is freaking out that he's like on drugs or dead <laughs> or some shit. And uh, she's like, "Oh, that package is there for you." And she's like, "What? What's in the package?" He's like, "Something I should have never forgotten." And it's like, "Well." So did the movie. <laughs> yeah. Because <laughs> now we're a rollerblading movie. <laughs> now we're a rollerblading movie. <laughs> you had room for a surfboard, but you couldn't fit, <laughs> yeah, you couldn't no. fit a box of rollerblades. <laughs> yeah. That was my Priorities, thing. man. It's like you couldn't have checked those. I mean, come on. Well, and there is something to be talked about with the continuity of this that I never noticed as a kid. The weather is and a major right. problem in this oh, movie. Oh, yeah. So how long, how long does it, is it between... Like we have to assume then that this montage is over the span of like a month or two. It, it, no, it's it's, or, all, no, three it's weeks. all messed up because he says something in the diner later. He's like, he's like three weeks, three weeks. But then he's three like, months. I only have three more months. He's like, but yeah. he's he's there for six months. Yeah. When he arrives, it is cold, cold Arctic tundra. But it's also the first day of school, so that probably means it's the it's February first. 
But then in the classroom, you look outside the window that first day, and it's green everywhere. Yeah. Ah. And then all of a sudden, what, a month later, it's just everybody's <laughs> out rollerblading, not worrying about the sand on the streets and F- the sidewalks. Yeah, FYI, if you're not from the Midwest, if you are from L.A., uh, that's not how it works here in the Midwest. You've got... Um, You've got first. First, you have winter, right? That's still February. Yep. Um, if you that's didn't actually know. second winter it's, by that's that second, point. Second winter. Then you have fall, spring. Then you have slush season. Then you have. Then you have so uh, sometimes third winter at that point. Yeah. Like yeah. Third cold harsh. It's, it's winter. creeping up. Yep. You'll yeah. you'll get dumped on hard one, at least one more time. Yep. You've got then. Yep. Then you have snow rain. And then, uh, and then you have uh, sand, sand on the streets right. month. Yep, where you can't like don't ever don't try to do don't anything because you're gonna you're you're gonna slip out. Don't do anything with a bearing involved. Yes. Don't even try rollerblading. No, yeah. no, 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 don't. That's exactly how it goes here, and that takes you up till about uh, May, <laughs> and that's that's what it is. And then, it's about the same as Iowa. Yeah. So. June, it starts again. It starts all <laughs> over. Um, <laughs> this is this is a dope ass street session though. Like I love this. I is love fucking him. awesome. I and, love him and the kids. And this music is dope. Bleed into beep, bleed into beep. It's it's like yeah. great. Like the mix is good. Yeah. Like the drums sound fucking tight. Yep. And it does this like um like Les Claypool, like uh Ingve Malmsteen kind of like <laughs> Weird, like Joe Satriani, like just like, oh, we're gonna fuck with the with the weird, uh, uh that, yeah, just like do like some weird Ooh, let's beats. Let's get syncopated. And it's shit. it's cool. I was like jamming and like you know watch watching a rollerblade yep. video. Felt like know? it got written to mimic this. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like this, this is rad. This is rad. Like mm. uh, it's the same thing. It's like when you finally get the montages of them doing cool tricks. So Mentos commercial. This is <laughs> just. You now can that already said see it. it. Now you can said it. He's gonna make five <laughs> Mentos commercials. You can already see it when he gets to the bottom of the steps and he turns around yeah, and waves. Mentos. <laughs> Mentos. Yeah, you can already fucking see it's it. It's already there. I'm gonna dare you. Try not to make one. Just, no. Yeah. Try not no. to make one. And then and it's, <laughs> no. And it's the and no. No. It's the moment. It's the moment. Nothing gets to you. It's him falling back on. It's on the hill. You know. He's like, oh hey. <laughs> Nothing gets to you. Speaking of that stair scene, though, like <laughs> oh. I, it, it reminded me of uh, the Joker stair scene. I'm like, eat your heart out, Joker stair Damn. scene. Uh huh. This is a, this is rollerblading down Damn, this hill. Do right. you think that was actually probably Cincinnati that they filmed mm-hmm. that at? Uh, it's hard to tell. It sounded that. like a lot of the rollerblading, from what um, Shane told us, a lot of the rollerblading stuff was Cincinnati. <laughs> so I'm guessing it was. All right, uh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> oh no. Suck oh, it, no. walk in Phoenix. This is Bladen Phoenix. <laughs> <laughs> Bladen <in> Cincinnati. <laughs> This is Bladen Goosen. <coughs> I don't like oh, it. Man. We're doing so good. Can, can we, <laughs> so stupid. Can we talk about? Thought. Can we talk about Nikki? I thought I want to talk about the date. I thought yeah. my entire uh, we we haven't even got to the date yet. Sorry, he, the, he met her at the. Yeah, at, I want to talk about that. Is that where you're going? Uh, yeah, I thought for my entire life that Nikki was the Icelandic girl from Mighty Ducks Two. Oh, I thought they were the same person. They are not the same person. And for anybody out there, like I'll, I'll maybe I'll put together a side by side. They they are the same person. They're just not. Mm. Like it might be a glitch in the matrix, kind of. But okay, yeah. Do do we like her as a do we like her as a budding love interest? Of course, she's yeah. Cute. She's fucking great. She's cute yeah. as hell. Uh, like when I when I saw this when I was younger, I was like, oh man, like that's. <laughs> Is he gonna? Are they gonna like get together? Like they get to date and stuff? That's awesome. They, you mean they get to hold hands? Man, that guy's so lucky. <laughs> Touch a girl, dude. What? What? <laughs> are you going on a? Are you going on a date? Oh, <laughs> but what if their mom has to drive them? Oh, thank God, Wiley got his license. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing we didn't karate kid this shit. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I do like uh, th- their whole interaction or whatever is is fun and cute. Um, but then like he brings out the skates and like zips by her, and I'm just thinking like as her, I'm just like okay. <laughs> Uh, you're gonna get us kicked. I, oh, uh, I want to. I want to come back here someday. Yeah, how? <laughs> like, she was a part of this. She like, got how, kicked out. How too. long how are you gonna do this? Yeah. Like, uh, I trying to get to know you, dude. Like, <laughs> yeah, maybe we can hold hands a little more. This is me. <laughs> <laughs> I got some. I got some real strange, like blank check vibes coming from this scene. Oh my of, god! Like, not that. Not that they're like one's older than the other, but at the same time, it's just like this. 
musical kind of vibe of like mm. might as well be like <laughs> oh man you're ever all having fun we're having a good time mister can i speak to you <laughs> fun's over oh, oh no. no and at that point no. <laughs> yeah. I'm just going to go. I know I, what you're going to tell me. I'm just going. I'm I on, have to go talk to her real quick. I'm on rollerblades. <laughs> <laughs> so, no. Uh, well, and, and if you didn't think that this was 1993, if you're like, no, this is a timeless feature that does not date it at all, we get I'm Too Sexy. No. I see that you're changing clothes. My name is Fred. <laughs> <laughs> May I right introduce said, myself? Fred. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> There's Fred. A, he's knocking. Right <laughs> said Fred's knocking, going, hello, I hear you making Excuse a movie. Me. <laughs> oh, Excuse me. Excuse <laughs> me. I didn't know it's why like, you were knocking. As soon as like you just put like another <laughs> layer of clothes on, you just like Huh? He's just he's just waiting there with he's just waiting there for signature so you can have the rights to this song. Yeah, you can have that. <laughs> it's, uh, it's currently 1993, and you need this. He doesn't I'm make sorry. any money off it. He just he just collects signatures from all the movies that it's been yeah. in. Oh yeah, but somebody this needs is, to like, finish this song off. But this is fun. Like I do like I do. Other than the clicheness of the song. Yeah. I like watching Seth Green change clothes. Yeah. I, I know. In all of his different outfits. It's fun. It's very funny. It's it's funny how much you can actually see, going back to you know Seth Green, I think he, uh, how talented he is. I think you can actually see some of the depth of what he can do without even any words being spoken, right? His mannerisms, he can kind of chameleon some things, right? Um, and he, it's like he comes out playing a different character yeah. every single time, and I think it's actually that's actually really good, yeah. man. And and again, I, I think it's uh like watching watching Mitchell's reactions. I'm like Shane McDermott has to be cracking up for real. Yeah, it seems real, this, right? I'm like, how could he not be if he's just got Seth Green in front of him? If that's how they shot it, yeah. you know. Uh, I thought it was great. I do like their um their the. Uh, Jesus, uh, what's her name? I'm sorry, Nikki. Uh, Nikki. Uh, Nikki and uh, Gloria. Mitch's. Well, Nick and Nikki and Mitch's like react or uh, uh, chemistry together is real nice. Mm. I like that, and I like that he's actually being kind of nice and smooth with her, like he is in his way. Like I'm sure she gets the line from like any Joe Schmo around town, just being like, "How about we go back to my place and get <laughs> Cincinnati." <laughs> <laughs> Take that belt away no, from yeah, him. Yeah, okay. Get you that actually belt. you reverse <laughs> yeah, you yeah, reverse you jokes yourself. You, son of you, a, reverse, you know, uh, you guys give me crap about some of my jokes. I'm sorry. Cincinnati, Ohio. <laughs> you let me know if that's ever been said. Uh no no no. That will be a design at confusedbreakfast.com. <laughs> that's you right. can buy this. Say let's, let's get, get Cincinnati. Cincinnati. And you can go buy that. And it's <laughs> it's gonna have it's gonna have Seth Green dressed as the cowboy. Yep. <laughs> And, and all proceeds will go to oh, getting shit. us into that place in Cincinnati to yeah. rollerblade through it. Yes, 100%. That's, that's what will happen. Uh, I can't wait yeah. to break my tailbone. I was, uh, uh, <laughs> I was re-listening to this movie in the shower, and I came up with that joke. Nice. <laughs> okay, well then, I got questions. <laughs> I got questions. Uh, they, they do go on their date. We get Glory involved. And I think I think he asked, doesn't he ask Nikki? He says, uh, if you could have lunch with any three people, alive or dead, who would you have lunch with? Who would you guys pick? Hmm. <coughs> Anybody, uh, alive Rob's, or dead? Rob Zombie, um, Stanley Kubrick, and off the top of my head, Josh Homme. Okay. Stone Age. Okay. AJ. Oh man, going off off top of the head. Um, uh. It would be Dean Martin, uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman, and uh, my my grandfathers. They took one seat. Sorry. Okay. Yep. Yep. Nice. Uh, well, that's really cool that you guys went there because I yep. would do Craig, AJ, and Sean. No, nope. that's really what I that do. A, that's the lamest answer I've ever heard in my life. We do this all the time. But I'd like we, to like <laughs> I'd like to sit down and have lunch with you and not talk about business and just we ask can you do questions. That. We can do it. We can make that make a wish well, come true, Mike. <laughs> I was hoping. I was sort of hoping that this could be our moment, you know, where we actually did something together. I wanted you want to, to stop s- the episode right now <laughs> yeah. and have lunch with us. Well, it'd be dinner now at seven fifty-two. 
<laughs> it's your daughter's birthday. I'm just I am recording this on my daughter's birthday, and all I can think about is you guys. Look, Actually, I, I changed my mind. All three seats go to Tim Robinson. Okay. <laughs> Tim Robinson. It's just Tim Robinson. Yeah. That's all it is. Yeah. Yeah, fine. He takes turns going to different seats and being different characters. From yes. <laughs> Let us know out there when you listen to this. Please. What, what who are your three people? <laughs> Um, so we stand, they stand up for their girlfriends, yeah. their, their pseudo girlfriends. Uh, we find out that Jack is Nikki's sister and Nikki's brother. Um, is that reveal like g- cool to you guys? Is that like kind of lame? I feel like it's fi- it fits in nice with the story. I think it's a fine reveal. I think it's <laughs> it's kind of one of those moments that I think like wow, you couldn't have told me. <laughs> <laughs> This is how we're going to find out. I literally... He blames Wiley, too. Yeah. He blames Wiley when he should be blaming her and be like, you could have said that at any second. Does nobody any talk moment. No. in this town? Like, no. you don't have anything. And then I think what's worse is it, it comes around and it's like, wait, wait, wait. Were you also dating, like, Blaine, Shitstain Blaine? I think she was. Like, dude rough which Gross. is why jack hates playing right so now you're fucked bro yeah this this is also a moment that never i love when we do this guys when we like try to be watch movies we've watched a million times and yeah. try to think critically about them I, I never realized this as a kid like this where mitchell loses is cool in the scene and like there's an edge to him all of a sudden yeah this this really drives home his story he told earlier about him and that kid on the wave it's like he was groomed almost being groomed to almost be a bank robber <sighs> Almost. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. No. No. I. I, off and on. I. I really like that theory. I just think it's interesting that he's this total laid back dude. But like, you can almost see in that moment. I think Shane does a great job with the acting on that. Yeah. In that, like, yeah, he does have a past. We haven't found out about that past other than yeah, I. I pretty much almost killed a kid. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you know, I, would, I would. I would say. I. I, I would say you see that switch kind of happen, and it happens with Jack. Mm-hmm. And that's what, that's the spot you're talking about, yes, right? Exactly. In the diner mm-hmm. at the end of this uh, oh, yeah. three months, yeah, three months. I don't give a yeah. shit about you, yeah. your town, or well, yeah, whatever. You ain't worth it, bro. Yeah, no one is. That's intense. And I was like, that's really good. Yeah, it's almost like he, like earlier in his life when he had like a dark experience, like maybe he had some violent past or something like that. That he prescribed himself to be like this now. Like he was never going to like go back mm-hmm. to that. You know, like he prescribed himself to read Buddha and, yeah. and just kind of be a chill Bodhisattva kind of kind of character. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. He 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 said, "I have to turn this leaf over." Yeah, yeah. Well, scene four. Mitchell's dream comes to fruition when he decides to proactively join Jack and his ice hockey brethren for a street hockey game against the Preps. Mitchell embarrasses Blaine, causing a change of heart from his teammates who visit the house the next day. Oh, also, in this restaurant, there were the teacher didn't care that they were arguing. Uh, there was no referees or anything. No, uh, no staff at the hockey game. Is there just no manager? Like I hate to be a Karen it's about Cincinnati, this. It's Cincinnati, bro. It's Cincinnati. Since- <laughs> You're of age in <laughs> Cincinnati. <laughs> no holds barred. No one cares. Okay. <sighs> Everyone knows that the preps run this town. Okay. Everyone knows that they can do whatever they want. <laughs> the, the adults are just like, uh, like cowering every time they walk by. <laughs> <laughs> it's Blaine. <laughs> oh no, Bree. Well, it is. Uh, it is Walt. We we should. If you haven't heard us mention that again, Walt, the number two, mm-hmm. the bumbling fucking idiot with a hilarious laugh, is actually Chris Edwards who um, is considered by many of his peers and aggressive inline skaters to be the founding father of aggressive rollerblading. Like, he's still, you can still find him. Um, He's still skating. He's got an Instagram, and he's still doing it. Uh, Chris Edwards was one of my favorite rollerbladers, and and I think it's really cool that he got to get in this movie. Yeah, I I was happy to see that, uh, to, like, doing research and see that that's him. Yeah. Uh, other than him him doubling for Mitch in all of the skating scenes, you know, it's and as we'll get to, they're incredible. Yes, they <laughs> they're, are. They're man. really good. It's it's those moments of of him, uh, uh, the montage that we saw him doing like the half pipe stuff. Right. I mean, and and <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> In real life, there's yeah. dicks all over that. Yeah. <laughs> Spray painted all over that. Yeah, just, just, <laughs> yeah, because it's Cincinnati. Um, <laughs> and I, but I love it because he is. It's like how much respect he 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 had on that set as we as we heard, oh, yeah. right. and then to give him 
what I honestly believe. I'm not going to ask you to push the button or anything, but it might be the most punchable face for me. <laughs> no, so. you're not going. You don't want to do it though. I'm just saying I'll let somebody else come yeah, around. Yeah, yeah. But I've I've kind of thrown it into the hat. It's a it's a he's so easy to hate in this movie. Oh, Blaine, I don't want to leave yet, Blaine. Do we have to? <laughs> <laughs> And you're just like, oh, God, you're the worst, I mean, dude. You Cackling push hyena. Blaine's pretty it, awful, too. Hit it. If we were on a train to yes. go punch a face, yeah. I'm on board. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Fuck the Buddhism. Fuck all the, um, I, I don't want any violence in my life. Punch Blaine. Chocolate stain Blaine. Dude. Yeah. Chocolate stain Blaine. He, he really, yeah, he's the perfect villain in this. He is. And he needs to get punched. He never gets punched. He's he never got gets the, what's coming to him. He's got the jawline for it, oh, for sure. Nice hairline, too. I, I know. Like it. It's very upsetting. Do Those want, eyebrows. Yeah. Do, we just, wanna, do we want to punch him? I kind of want to hang out with him. Sometimes <laughs> I just want to... I needed. I need, wanted to destroy something beautiful. I was I was wrong about you all along, man. I'm I'm sorry. I'm, I'm sorry, sorry, man. God, that was like the most genuine... It was. <laughs> ...like apology I think I've seen in like a lot of cinema. Did, I want to ask Sean, like, as this happened, did, were you seeing that coming? Like, they showed up at his door and they were being all mean? Like, did you? Did that take you at least for a little bit of a ride? Uh, no. I, I, I kind of saw, like, that turn coming. Like, it was kind of foretold a little bit since he's, like, dealing with this group, right, you right, know? Right. And every time, like, there's, like, a problem, they're like, we actually need you. We're just not saying it. Like, we need... Dude! You know, like, <laughs> dude, I'm actually wondering when they do show up and, and give him this admiration, like, are they do they actually care or are they just like, no, this kid is a good skater. We finally saw him on rollerblades like we need him for Devil's Backbone. Yeah. You did. guys cool to just pretend like we like him. He did that move during the hockey game. Jack guys. didn't go. Jack's like, I'm not fucking pretending. I like yeah. him. They go. That's fine, Jack. We'll go pretend that we like him. We'll get him here. Yeah. Jack says, you guys go pretend if you like him. He'll believe it more if I don't show up. Yeah, because I won't be able to pretend. <laughs> right. I hate him. Yeah. So I don't want him with my freak. sister, holding hands with my sister. I want that to be revealed at the end of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I do I do like his, like, it was great acting by Jack. We, like, he, obviously, he's a great actor, but uh, it felt super genuine. Mm -hmm. I would forgive anybody who... For, uh, man, said sorry to me like that. It's like we just had you all wrong, man. Yes, we just had you all pegged <laughs> all wrong, you know. And uh, I again, I I love it how it's kind of laced with this uh, little bit of comedy in there from Edie McClurg. <laughs> and I'm sorry, I can't remember the the, the dad's name. Uh, his his name is Patrick Thomas O'Brien. Patrick Thomas O'Brien. And the only thing I ever knew him from was he was Mr. Dewey in Saved by the Bell. He was one oh. of the teachers. Oh, gosh. and with the exact same demeanor. Character. Exact same character. Okay. Exact same buried. Yes, just <laughs> audio. Like, oh, I don't know. And, and again, that's when he stands up and looks at the TV. Yeah, and this is that moment where it's like, <laughs> would you boys like some grape Kool Aid? <laughs> no, 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 no. Thank you, man. No. <laughs> oh. Let's go make some caramel corn. <laughs> caramel popcorn. <laughs> like, that's just the thing you do. And then it's like, uh oh, well, I was watching this. Okay. Uh, Come on, father. Uh, she calls him father. Yeah. Father. <laughs> <laughs> it's uh, you don't need that, <laughs> but it's so good that either he chose to do that or the director chose I to do just, that. that was so much, and then and then yeah, like you lace that in, you lace that in with the with the serious tones of yes. them uh, accepting him in. I love it so much. I think I think that's honestly one of my favorite it's scenes so in this movie. <laughs> I, like it, I, it is, yeah. Leo asked me, La ola asked me, the wave is mine. I don't care about your dumb dream. <laughs> hey, well, bro, everything we need to know is in our dreams. They're windows to enlightenment, man. This is where I'm just like, oh, shut up. No. Will you give it a rest? This is where 14-year-old Mike's like, let me get my notepad out. Hold on. <laughs> what did he say? Windows to enlightenment? Dreams? Dreams are important. I should tell that to someone? Oh, man, that's good. That's, that's good. That's fucking good. Oh, Fuck. this is heavy stuff. This, <laughs> this, is, is, <laughs> this is great stuff. This is great. I'm writing it down. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> oh, wow. This well, what about, what about the street hockey game? I feel like, again, this is like... I can't believe that many people fucking showed up for this shit. Is this like a, it's almost like a video game where they're like, yeah, you know, this week we play in the abandoned aircraft yeah. hangar. Next week we <laughs> yeah. play down by the, underneath the highway. Yeah. We'll unlock these levels <laughs> yeah. as what, we go. What is this skate or die, like rollerblades video game thing that's going on? You it's, know what I mean? It's like, crazy, dude. Oh yeah. You gotta go, you gotta go get your stats up at the hockey rink. <laughs> <laughs> and yeah. then you're going to be ready for the downhill. Yeah. But you better go. You got to go against Walt before you go against Blaine. 
So you got to work your way up. That's <laughs> so. <laughs> but you're. It's like okay, uh, and then <laughs> the rules are. There are no rules. Let's get you want to go. You want to move on to go. The race? Let's do it. Scene five. Wiley and Mitchell arrive to the race against the preps where they go down a harrowing street route term devil's backbone. An aggressive and athletic snake reaches the finish first for Mitchell's team. But two preps swiftly follow suit, needing only one more person to win. And with Blaine inside of the end, he decides to barrel into Mitchell, but poorly times his attack and instead lands in the waters below. This leaves Jack and Mitchell in clear sight of the finish as they approach in tandem victory to cheers of their awaiting schoolmates. Real quick. Unless you got something. No, Go no, please. You raised your hands like you. No, I was, like, I was just, I'm so excited for Devil's Backbone, bro. Like you were, like you just told somebody it doesn't matter if you win by an inch or a mile. No. Nope. Winning is winning. <laughs> <I know. laughs> you never had your car. You anyway, never had you your You never car. had your blades. <laughs> They're racing for pinks. Uh, <laughs> they look like Vin Diesel right there. Okay, you, look, you look good. You Thanks. look good. Thanks, man. I feel good. They say at the end of that little scene, right, where it's like, it's like, well, look, here's the thing. We're doing this big race. We're going and we're going to do a downhill race. One thing to squash it all. Like we're going to be done with it. It's like, oh, okay, sounds good. That sounds like a fun time. <laughs> where's it? Wait, wait. Where's the race? Wiley asks. Where's the race? Devil's backbone. It's like. What's Devil's Backbone? It's like, you know what fucking Devil's Backbone is! It's only the most dangerous thing that could ever be named something Devil's Backbone. Wait, who's Jack? <laughs> Where am I? <laughs> I fucking do love, I never noticed it ever, is at the starting line, they literally they literally got the girl from class yeah, that's to okay. show up. They're like, they're, like, they're like, hey, hey, April. Yeah, listen, you're the best at talking. We heard you in speech class today. Can you just meet us at the top of Devil's Backbone? Because we need yeah. someone to tell us when to stop. Yeah, in yeah. The, in the speech class, she's like, ain't no man talking about my ass when I walk away or something like that. I'm like, where's her movie? Yeah. yeah. She needs to be in this movie way more. Yeah. Why is she just here and that's it? <laughs> and then, yep, she's at the top of the hill I going, want her here we so go. Much more. There it is. I wanted her. Well, I love uh, uh, Wiley's girlfriend in this. The girl who plays her, I forget. Um but that should have been his girlfriend. That should have been oh, his Oh, that would have been tight. Oh, yeah. I love I that. like that. Is is Devil's Backbone the entirety of this, even through the um, chain link overpass? We and don't the, know. Like, <laughs> is this map? Is Devil's out? Backbone just the first hill? How did they know this map? Plotted out? Everybody is, had map quest directions they, <laughs> in their pocket. <laughs> No, I like you, dude. You're absolutely right. Did they all know the route, or was it basically just first one down there? Was it just like get down there any way you can? <laughs> it's just, it's like you take the path. It's like were they scouting this out? Like, did they have time to prep? Was there were there markers? What, what happened? It's so right? intricate. It's such an intricate route. It seems unfair. It's like, well, you guys know how to navigate downtown. It's like, no, I'm from L.A. I'm gonna so, follow you guys. If I was in the lead, <laughs> we'd be fucked. Yeah, like I just have to follow people. Yeah, it's like you're in the lead, like looking behind, like <laughs> <laughs> right. Okay. Oh no, not that way, <laughs> Mitchell. Left. <laughs> I don't know. Did you I... notice? Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, one, no, one you're thing, good, man. Did you notice Wiley's shirt? That Superman shirt is kind of reminiscent of Chunk Superman shirt Ooh. shirt in the Goonies. Like it's got that same kind of it's color. It's a dark blue. It's, almost. I think it's a little lighter. Yeah, I thought, but like it looks, he looks kind of like dressed up like Chunk and uh, the Goonies. That's he, all he he definitely and and for the most part, he looks like Anakin Skywalker, uh, uh, pod racing. Now that is pod racing. Now this is podcasting. <laughs> <laughs> it's, like, it's like this is. He looked just like him, and, and like with the goggles and everything. <laughs> yeah, I was like, okay, sounds okay. good. Okay, okay. I think I think this I think this scene is the most iconic scene in the movie. I think yeah. it's the best scene in the movie. I personally I was nervous that this wouldn't hold up, and I think it does. No, it's all really seamless. It all, it all looks great. Um, the, there's still the comedic bits, even with uh, uh, Chris Edwards yep. as Walt, like fucking up, being the shit. worst skater, being the worst. <laughs> it's kind of funny, <clears throat> but uh, it all looks really good. It's all edited really nice. Um, it's you know it looks like uh, someone. Did their homework and watched like sports videos and just kind of filmed it like that. Go ahead. Well, no, no. I did you notice that there wasn't that much music? True. Yeah. And it it like sort of added to me. Like it was all the sounds of the rollerblades and like the brakes and the wheels. And that's a bold choice. 
like especially if you want it to be like X X Games cool scene, you're gonna put a song like you had earlier. Mm-hmm. But this is like nothing. It's just the wind and rollerblades and like it was awesome. Yeah. There, there, there's so many moments where, and I, I believe, I, I believe Shane mentioned this. Like, there's a lot of moments, a lot of close calls during the shooting of this, but a lot of people, he said, for the most part, everything was really well kept, and it seemed most people came out unscathed. He said he kind of took the biggest beating out of all this stuff, you know. The, but watching this, you, you realize, especially like there's a moment there's a couple moments in this right and like you're talking about uh there's no music you see mitchell go between like a couple of cars just go vroom, like kind of s- almost sidestep mm-hmm. into through these cars and you're like you are fractions you're like two inches away from that being whew, to <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean ending like your pelvis yeah into that car you know what i mean and there's a lot of moments like that watching the the one guy go underneath the car the one yeah guy that yeah he hits he like rolls up underneath a moving car and yeah, yeah. it looks brutal <clears throat> does and then and then that moment i think it's there's something about that that just makes my life it, it gives me goosebumps when they're going down and they're trying to use their brakes and it's just <laughs> yeah just shaving it off gone you're like, man, it, that's that's the kind of stuff that I could never do. I could never do nope. that. Watching this, watching that whole entire scene for as long as it mm-hmm. is, it's it's really, really, really awesome. They all go under the the semi like Fast and the Furious. Yeah. Um, but that that big jump at the end where he's trying to get to the finish line, that big jump. Um, there's an interview with Chris Edwards on YouTube actually. He's just like with a couple podcasters. I think I don't know if it's like a rolling rollerblading extreme sports kind of uh podcast or not but um there's an interview with him and he's like yeah we did that like i don't know how many like 10 15 times and uh i won like the first one he like almost over overdid oh, it Jesus. he's like barely clipped the end of that that trailer that the bed of that trailer and uh then he said I think the second one that they did is the one that's in the movie where he like stumbles a little and bit, he slides out, slides of it, out, and of. comes back oh. up, and then uh, they got like a few of him actually landing it and actually pulling it off. Um, but yeah, they wanted to use that one because it like looks like more seamless uh, with what they had for uh, Shane. Yeah, like, okay. Like cutting to, cutting back to Shane, it looked a little that way. Shane could slide out yeah, of it instead yeah. of rollerblading it mm. down. It. Mm. It's a cool. It's a cool interview. You guys should look it up. It's uh, it's it's cool to hear him uh, talk about the behind the scenes of the especially rollerblading. This whole time, I'm watching him like get ready and like kind of prepping for that jump and looking for it. I just want the all I could hear was the audio of Gone in sixty seconds, <laughs> and it's just like rains. And he's just like pointed the gun at him and stuff. And then he makes the joke. Oh, oh. It never rains, it pours. It never rains, it pours. What? What, <laughs> what did you say? Oh, I, I think it's great, man. I, and I, it makes, it gets me wondering too, because of course it has the, I don't know if I like it or not, but it, it, it almost. It almost uh, freeze frames. Yeah. But instead it just goes to slow motion. <laughs> and fades out or whatever, yeah. but like what what happens after this, right? I know. Airborne two. <laughs> what hap what happens after this? Because he's got three more months in this town, so he's a fucking hero. Yeah. Does he fall in love with this place and to where he like actually wants to stay and maybe come back here? Or is he like this is so great. I got my girl. I got my oh god, thank God, my plane, my plane leaves tomorrow. I'm <laughs> yeah, the fuck tomorrow. Oh god, <laughs> thank like, you. So long, suck <laughs> down, suck <laughs> down. I don't know. I don't know what that is. Like what? <laughs> what? What happens after this for him, man? I mean, it's L.A. It's kind of. <laughs> it's kind of way I thought. He's too. dug in, man. You're like, yeah, you got three months. He's like three months left of this, and it's just him hanging out, and that's. And then he's going back. And then he's like, I'm going. Yeah. Like, I'm, it's like, like, let's be real. It's not like he has much choice in this matter. <laughs> it's like, well, he's yeah, I mean, 16, I actually, or he's, he's, what is he? 17. 17. So he, this is his senior year, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's, what, right? that's what it sounds like. Yeah. So it's his senior year of high school. He can he can move back to town and open up a rollerblade shop. Yeah, that's like, what I was thinking, man. I'm sure. Ooh, he, that'd yeah. be cool. I'm sure he's like gonna open up a like. What if he opens up the Cincinnati's first like indoor wave pool kind of thing, like the, those surfing oh, simulators? Oh shit! He's the inventor of the hydroflow or whatever yeah. that are on like cruise oh ships God. and shit. Boom. He didn't make it 
He's like, I'm going to open up a surfboard shop in Cincinnati. <laughs> <laughs> Two days later, out of business. <laughs> out of business. Shit. <laughs> Shoot, it didn't work out. It didn't work out. At least I got Nikki. <laughs> <laughs> nope. No, she you broke don't. Up. No, no, you don't. <laughs> the only person who bought one was Wiley, and he just <laughs> put it on his wall. <laughs> All right, boys, you got anything else on this movie? That's it. We have dissected this with a modern eye. We've stripped away the nostalgia. It's time to give this a rating. Sean, we're going to start with you because you have never seen this movie before. What is your modern day rating of this movie? Cool, man. Yeah, I uh, I really enjoyed watching this movie. Um, I I thought that uh, the the first. Uh, 45 minutes. I was really into like the group of kids. Um, I I liked their chemistry a lot. I liked the back and forth, and it really seemed like a kind of a cohesive uh, unit that they had, like the that group of friends, the cliques that they have, the preps, and and then these guys. Um, it all made sense to me. Uh, the acting's great. I think all the performances are are definitely passable and watchable. Um, then you get Jack Black and Seth Green, where it just becomes kind of iconic and maybe what most people remember this movie for. Um, but then, you know, it, it becomes the rollerblading movie, and then that's even fucking cool. That, the, the shots, like we were just saying, about, of Devil's Backbone, they look great, they hold up. Um, the shots of Chris Edwards into uh, uh, Shane uh, yeah. are pretty seamless. I didn't really see any cracks. I thought since I had never seen Shane McDermott, ever in a movie because it's the only one that he was just doing everything. I think we said that in the interview. Mm. Um, yeah, I, I, I got to say, though, 90s cheese is, different, is a different kind of cheese. Mm-hmm. 90, or 80s cheese is aged and has a, a specific wine pairing with it, I feel like. Oh, sure, sure. And 90s cheese is just like a sharp cheddar. Yeah. <laughs> and, and it's unfortunately not my kind of cheese. Um, I, have to, I have to go off of Rad with this. I think Rad... Do you know what you gave Rad? I gave Rad a five. <clears throat> I like this movie. I would definitely want to watch Rad over this movie just because of the cheese factor. Uh, but right, right, right. In terms of how it's made and uh, what I thought about it, I'm gonna give uh, Airborne a five point four. <laughs> He's going above Rad. AJ, what about you? Can I hear my Rad? Well, you're just gonna have to give me a second, okay? No, I won't do that. Then. No, we won't be doing that. I want. <laughs> I, I'll tell you this. I I as I okay, I you, re- here you go. You gave Rad <laughs> Yeah. Uh oh. You gave Rad an eight point six. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> uh here's the thing. Uh I, I understand everything that you're saying about like, you know, that the difference between those kinds of that 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 nostalgia tint uh, to movies, right? Eighties has a very specific kind of, you know, to you know, tint and overlay, it seems like. So does the nineties. There's parts of this that I, I think this movie overall gives me the vibe of it's like a a darker and gr- a darker gritty almost early like kind of a Disney Channel original movie. Okay, that's the vibe yeah. I get from this movie. Like I should see this on Disney Channel, but it was before they really started putting the barriers on everything. So that being said, man, it's so cool to be able to see. I wish I wish Shane McDermott would have you know there would have yep. been more more uh coming from him. Um I really enjoyed his performance in this movie Jack Black and Shane uh and Seth Green. Um all the colors. Uh it just seems like they Are you okay? I'm good. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> um I I think I think they all did really good and it's really cool to go back and see them and see what they've done early early on in their careers and I love the sequences that 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 happen near the end of this movie are absolutely wonderful. I think they're I think they're great. So I am going to give this um above what I think what I find to be those super rewatchable movies and it's a 7.1. Nice. 7.1 for the age. I just I had a lot of trouble stip- stripping away the nostalgia on this one. I I love I love just like kind of like the whatever just the 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 mentality behind this movie of like the hey man you know you can you can have a second chance and you can you can you can be cool and you can like be about peace and stuff like that and I just I think it's just a really fun movie I I related to it a lot I I really enjoyed our conversation with Shane and yeah. I'm going to I'm going to give it a 7.51 nice. Executive producer Bud Larson says I had to rent this on YouTube I remember this movie was way cooler when I was younger 
I looked at a lot of the movies that came out in 1993 with movies like Schindler's List, Tombstone, The Program, Dazing and Views, Sniper, Rudy, The Sandlot, and Jurassic Park, to name a few. I guess a movie about a California surfer that also rollerblades who is forced to move to Cincinnati to live with relatives wasn't what people were looking for. The scene where they skate down Devil's Backbone seems a bit extreme, from hairpin turns going down hills with stop signs at the bottom that they just roll through, kids getting hit by cars, and a group almost gets taken out by a semi. The funniest part of the scene was when Wiley couldn't make the turn and ended up DDTing himself on the person's driveway. <laughs> Most punchable face is Blaine. We agree. He was just a dick the whole movie. Prop from the movie would be Snake's Helmet. That's a good one. Nice. I do like Snake's Helmet. Modern mm. Day Rating 5.85. So... That takes us to a 6.47 mm-hmm. as a group, modern day. 6.47 is going to take us to number. You'll be surprised at this. Um, that'll be number 84 on our list. So it's getting towards the bottom. That is just better, just better than Out Cold, just worse than Roadhouse. Oh, okay. No? That, yeah. Fitting. How do you feel about that? I, no, I, I, I agree with that. I think I, I think that's a good place for that to be. Yeah. I really yeah. do. I really do too. Like with the cheese of Roadhouse and the uh, the kind of '90s comedy aspect of Out Cold, I think it's a good sandwich. It's a there. great, for, yeah. Well, I think we did it. We hope you enjoyed the episode. Thanks for being here. Tune in next week. First of all, upcoming on Monday, we do have a full blown interview with Shane McDermott, Mitchell yeah. Rosen from this movie. You will enjoy it. After that. <sighs> Raiders of the Lost Ark, followed by Back to the Future 2. Holy... C- it's going to be busy. It's going to be pretty busy. <sighs> this is your fault. This is doing? all of your fault. You guys voted on these, and like guys. it's just bad. It's bad news. Yeah. Guys. So, if you're also new to the podcast, go back this time last year. Happy Gilmore. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Another sports movie, huh? Another sports movie, huh? What a sports what a sports nut, nut huh? <laughs> <laughs> and don't forget, we have a voicemail. Call us at 319-804-9596. Leave us some feedback like today's caller. Hey, this is Nick calling from Washington. I just listened to the Starship Troopers episode, and I just got to say, there's a little tiny bit at the beginning where you guys are talking about Xander, and Mike, you made a comment. You said, this is coming from someone who's not good looking, and I just want to say, fuck that. You are a very handsome man. All three of you guys, top tier, super handsome guys. I don't want to hear that kind of <laughs> self-deprecation talk. You guys are awesome. Very beautiful. Love you all. After our after <laughs> Thanks, man. after interviewing Shane McDermott and that handsome hunk of a man, I needed that little uplifting thing. Yeah, for us yeah. There, you know? that's good. It's nice to know. That's one hundred percent true. Nick from Washington, I believe that's who. It yeah, was. dude, thanks for calling in. That's very kind of you to say those things. <laughs> appreciate that uplifting talk. We really do, guys. We really appreciate everyone listening to the show, watching us on YouTube. Uh, if you do feel so inclined, drop us a rating. Right there, five stars. We always appreciate that good stuff. We love reading those little reviews. Find us on that social media, Confused Breakfast. Search at Confused Breakfast. Search for Confused Breakfast anywhere on social media, guys. Go on to ConfusedBreakfast.com and look at our merch. You can get some koozies. You can get mm. some goosins. <laughs> you can get some, some shirts. You can get whatever you like on there. You can get some surfboards you're not even going to need. Yeah. If you, especially if you live in Iowa. Uh, you can go to that same website and see our ratings, see where this landed. I think it's in between Out Cold and Roadhouse. Kind of fun. And, guys, if you've purchased a bottle of our whiskey, let us know what you think. Take a picture of yourself with it. Do everything. Okay, bye. I love you. And we are produced by Upload Media Group in Cedar Rapids, Iowa. We got Craig at the controls. Learn more at UploadMediaGroup.com. And we are proud of proud members of the cloud 10 iheart podcast network learn more there at cloud 10.fm that's it for us bras we'll see you later ah later bra <laughs> <laughs> ah.